I've been active in user groups uh, for 10 years in the Apple group and the Commodore 64 group and the uh, PC users group and the San Diego Computer Society. So I was well aware of the value of and the desirability of uh, providing a place where people could get together one-on-one -on -one and be uh, and learn from each other. So it was a natural thing to do since I was new to VB and I needed help. So I guess we just uh, had that first meeting and uh, I don't know if you can remember how many were at the meeting, but it seems like maybe 10 people showed up, which was a little surprising to me. And uh, we all decided that uh, associating with each other was a mutual benefit and it was fun besides. So uh, it, uh, it just went on from there. Well, there certainly was an intense interest in the beginning once it got going, and I, I can sort of remember meetings of 100 people or more. Uh, everybody saying, boy, this is new, and I want to get into it, and uh, uh, a user group is a way to uh, associate with people and, and learn. My name is William Getz, and I am a software engineer here in San Diego. I've been attending the San Diego.net developer group for a little over three years. I've been gainfully employed for two. Prior to that, I lost my job as a, as a contractor. I did tenant improvement um, in the carpentry department. So, three, so 2008, everything kind of fell apart and I had nowhere to go except to college. And a buddy of mine who's been developing for 10 or so years said, well, now that you're not working, you have time to pair program. Oh, and by the way, I highly recommend going to this user group. I was a bit out of the way. I was living in El Cajon, but I made the effort to get here once a month, and I was absolutely floored by how welcoming the community was. Everyone was really delighted that, that people were there. My name is Jason Kearney. I'm a senior developer at Hunter Industries. Uh, the reason I come to the .NET developers group is for several reasons. I like the talks. I like networking. A lot of the people here are very interested in what they do. They're very passionate. It's fun to talk to them about it, even when you, don't, when you disagree. Sometimes those are the best discussions ever. Uh, everyone is helpful, and when you have a problem, it's a great, great place to come and get advice, and everybody's free with it. Yeah, so I come here for the social aspect as well as the uh, chance to. My name is uh, Rod Nazire. I'm a senior developer. Uh, local company here in San Diego. I enjoy every month that I, I, I came here. One thing is uh, learning new stuff. Number two is validating that what you're doing is actually correct. And uh, number three, uh, having a community agreeing to a certain standards in, in writing codes. My name is Paul Whitmer. I'm a developer at Bridgepoint Education. And I come to the user group to learn more about .NET and to share what skills I have as well, and uh, basically uh, discuss techniques and help uh, network. I've also been a speaker for the group. I discussed uh, SignalR for one of the sessions about two months ago, and it was fun. I learned how to use uh, SignalR for pushing services in my day-to-day -day projects, and I wanted to share with the community of people that want to learn, and it, it seemed like it was uh, pretty well received. My name is David Kennedy, I'm a senior software developer at Carefusion. Um, I'm coming to these things because, um, well, Paul touched on something which was networking, and my current job I got by meeting people here at this .NET developer group. Uh, but beyond job opportunities, I come here to uh, both learn and share with the community. I've given a few talks at the meetings, um, which I think were pretty well received. My delivery might have been shaky, but I think the content was good. Uh, but there's a, there's a plethora of, um, of great talks that uh, great community speakers come here to give, and I'm really thankful to have um, free access to that. I'm Susie. I'm Megan, and we're technical recruiters from Tech Systems focusing on applications and specifically .NET. Yeah, and we've been coming to this user group for about eight months now. We've actually placed three people from this user group. Yep. Um, I've reviewed resumes and helped people just start aligning what they're gonna, how they're gonna start 
their career searches. And also something that we were both talking about today was we think it's a really great opportunity for all of the .NET developers to be able to network with each other and um, learn a lot from each other. So from as an outsider, I see that as something that would be really valuable. Why to come? Yeah, and even though we're not coders, we're still <laughs> learning a lot. And um, it's really interesting for us to kind of come and see and really like learn and see the behind the scenes of what we're actually recruiting. And it's a really great networking tool for us and for everyone in the industry. So, yeah. Uh, my name is Nick Lewitz. I'm the Director of Technology Services for Vaco Technology. And I'm Joe Frizee, and I'm a technical recruiter for Vaco Technology as well. Yeah, we really enjoy coming to these types of user groups. We get an opportunity to meet a lot of really great talent, as well as get a chance to learn about our profession a little bit more. Uh, it gives us the ability to better serve our clients and, and help different developers and coders get positions that they really uh, could benefit from, and we, we like to change people's lives. Yes, to add on to that, uh, changing people's lives does uh, mean a lot to us because we always do care about who we're affecting um, because it's that satisfaction of being able to help someone not only with the job but their career changing uh, move. Uh, it's not always easy and it's a little scared, uh, so obviously having someone there to work with you uh, throughout the process, uh, trying to help out with organizing things, working out car rides if you're working out for a schedule for an interview. Um, but just being able to meet new faces uh, just and learn more about the technologies that are um, running the companies around here, uh, we learn it kind of on a surface level. To learn just a little bit lower uh, is very intriguing and something I'd like to do more. And it's just really, really fun. Uh, my name is Jonathan Batchelor and I'm a software developer at Bridgepoint Education. I first discovered the .NET developer group actually shortly after moving to San Diego from Colorado about five and a half years ago. And I was a Mac guy back then, no .NET experience whatsoever, and was trying to find out what kind of programming communities were around, looking for local user groups because I was used to a fairly active programming community in Denver, Colorado. And what I found to be one of the most vibrant groups in the whole area was the .NET developer group. And I actually got roped in at first because Scott Reed was giving a talk on iPhone development way back then using a Hackintosh at the time. And I was curious about iPhone development, so came to that first meeting and was really impressed with the quality of the content, really thought Scott did an incredible job in his presentation. Um, David Carter was there leading the group, and he made sure all the code got posted online shortly after the meeting. And basically, I just got absolutely hooked on those meetings from that point forward. Um, shortly thereafter, found out that David not only ran the group, but also taught a course at UCSD Extension on .NET Fundamentals. So I went and took that course and started to get my feet wet in .NET. And basically, you know, five years later, I'm now a professional .NET developer. I go to all the meetings. I go to the code camps. They're an absolutely phenomenal resource, and I can truly say... I've been basically raised as a developer by the .NET developer group around here. Not only did I learn a ton from all these meetings that I went to, the code camps I went to, and just the individuals who I met at these meetings, but also the jobs that I've been able to get since then in the you know, San Diego area have literally all been through people I've met at the group. My very first .NET programming job I got because David McCarter worked at the company that I was uh, looking to apply to. The next job I got once more was through uh, Andrew Karcher, who works at Bridgepoint Education. And he's a member of another user group. And so yeah, literally every job that I have gotten in San Diego has in some way been through connections that I've made at the .NET developer group. And I am sure it will be an invaluable resource for the rest of my career, and I hope that I'll be a resource for others as time goes on. Hi, my name is Woody Hewitt. I'm a longtime uh, uh, user group supporter. I've actually helped run the San Diego.NET Developers Group uh, for many a year, and I had started a user group back in Dallas years ago. And I uh, have always been involved with many different user groups. Um, I think they're an incredibly valuable resource and that this one has been going on now for 20 years, starting with VB and now covering all of the .NET platform. It's been an incredible experience for me. 
to be involved as an organizer, as an attendee, and, and now as kind of a at-large member. How about that? Um, but I really can't believe it's been 20 years. I've been involved with this group for at least 15 years, and for it to keep being as strong and as going as it is is incredible. Uh, my hat's off, mostly to David McCarter the only guy who's made it for the whole duration. And I know the whole community really appreciates all his efforts and all the benefits that we get from being uh, attending attendees, as well as for being able to participate. And my big thing is if you haven't spoken at your local user group, go speak. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. And congratulations, Dave. Well, let me tell you how I got started with this group. I, was on CompuServe, yes, this was back in the day, and I reached out to San Diego to see if there's any user groups because I was going to be moving back into San Diego, and I knew this guy, David McCarter, who had stolen some good VB code from me and published, and I love that David right now shaking his head, but that's okay. Um, and then I came out for a visit, and I wound up coming to the user group in a very dark green small room at Vortex Systems and there was this long haired hippie ass fool in the front of the room trying to herd all the cats with different people going different ways and everything but immediately I could tell the energy of this group was really awesome and having Dave and at the time Richard up at the front driving it it was a great experience and I could tell I really wanted to be involved and so when I finally moved back to San Diego, I wound up saying, how can I help? I want to speak. I want to help run it. I want to do everything and have somewhat been involved ever since. And all I can say is that my best speaking experience was as a Microsoft employee standing up in front of everybody wearing an open source Apache T-shirt talking about ASP.NET. Uh, that was a quite memorable speaking experience. But through all of our different movements, trials and tribulations of keeping the group going and everything, it's been wonderful. Uh, I, I do remember when we, we first started and, and you were d really into the shareware stuff. And mm -hmm. I went over to your apartment there and, and you had your kids put it together uh, <laughs> packages and and uh, uh, to, to send out with uh, doing software development. This was in the days when there was no internet for us to communicate through. So uh, people would develop these user groups so that they could even communicate about interest. And, and also the, the tech support that was available was very, very poor. You couldn't, if you had a problem with Microsoft site, or Microsoft products, you would usually have to go through paid support, and paid support generally people knew sucked. Yeah, they still do. <laughs> and you get the you get the advice of one person who's usually a first level person, and you're paying big money in advance for that. No matter how good or bad that advice is, that's all you have. Uh, so uh, the user groups provide a, a lot of solutions to that type of environment. Uh, it provides people who are the true experts. The people who are professionals, who are working on that software on a daily basis, who know how it really works, and they're not just people answering phones for someone else uh, and getting paid to do that. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for uh, to get uh, advice from people who know what it work, how it works, but also multiple people so that you have this peer concept where if someone gives you the wrong answer, there's certainly going to be someone in the room that will, will correct them and give you the right answer. Yep. You don't get that when you call a tech support line. <laughs> if they give you the wrong answer, you have to explore how wrong it is until you finally call back and say, hey, you gave me the wrong answer. <laughs> Yeah. And so the user group community was was very valuable for that. So that's why um, uh, I had worked with a number of large user groups uh, in L.A. Um, uh, dealing with other products. Uh, I started uh, with the uh, 
uh, Paradox database management system. I was a consultant with that, and I was very active in, in a group that that we started there called the Los Angeles Area Paradox Users Group, and they had multiple chapters in San Diego. They had six chapters. They had a newsletter, uh, and they had meetings in L.A. So I'm out in San Bernardino. Uh, I've learned how to use this product. There's nobody even close to my area that knows anything about paradox okay uh so i had to drive to santa monica to go to this meeting and then i became a speaker there and that's how i got involved with actively uh doing consulting in los angeles is uh, um i was speaking there to the group i was learning as i was speaking and one of the consultants there saw hey this is a guy i should hire and and so that's where i got my introduction so it's kind of an example of of how someone coming into a group can use it to get into the industry without having any type of uh, degree or formal education. So around that time is when uh, I started looking at creating, you know, possibly creating user group because I had been involved with a number of user groups. Um, and uh, so uh, I started a C++ users group and that was going pretty good. Uh, and but this VB looked like it was pretty interesting. The VB three, and so I started uh, looking around, and then lo and behold, in the, the computer edge, I saw the announcement for someone else had the same great idea of starting the group. So it wasn't my notification, but uh, you know, people uh, who are interested all, all kind of think alike. And so around the same time, enough interest had developed that, that uh, yeah, Rick Eckert. So uh, I was thrilled because I didn't have to do the organization of it at that point. I could just show up to the, to the meeting. I met Rick. I, I met you and Tom and a number of other, uh, other people. And uh, we started the, the VB user group. And so I, I started speaking at some. My perspective was a lot on the database side and, and uh, dealing with client-server interaction and, and VBXs and, and different types of uh, tools. And so that was the whole start of the component-based world. And so I, I did uh, talks on uh, elastic controls, um, dealing with uh, interactive user interface uh, type controls. And uh, that's, that's what my involvement started as. Is kind of going back to the context, you know, pre-internet days. Okay, that's a pretty hard thing to remember those days. Uh, but yeah, the, we we learned about it through the computer edge because uh, the the that was the only magazine that covered information uh, in in the locally. Uh, there, there were some conferences that were done. There was a radio show, uh, but that was dealing more with PC stuff and and, uh, and computer technology, not programming. So basically, there was no programming information in San Diego except for user groups that had been created. So you either were on your own or you went to a user group, and if there wasn't a user group, your only chance of, of really talking to people about it was to create your own. And so that's how the... The initial part of it was basically after the BB3 pretty much came out, I think that's when the interest really started shooting up for, for, for Visual Basic. And, uh, I think that people like to hire people who, who are engaged, okay? And they're not merely just asking uh, to see if they can get a job. Your involvement with, with the user group is one way you learn about these new technologies that are coming out. Of course, the people who were involved with VB6 were the ones who learned about the beta of the .NET world first. So that's part of uh, the advantages of being involved with the user group is you start hearing about things that are going to be released because you're involved and engaged, okay? A lot of times, you know, uh, you're, you're sitting uh, at a company focused on a project. You don't have a whole lot of time to catch up with news, OK, uh, you know, I, I you know, recommend, uh, you know, like .NET Rocks and things like that. But a lot of developers just they don't not even aware of a program like .NET Rocks. Yeah. OK. And so it's through user groups that you can find out about these things. And then, you know, when they do these tours and things so, so you can actually see the see them talk in, in person, it, it's it's through user groups that you learn about a lot of these things. Uh, you know, Google, if you just search for good developer information on Google, you're not going to get a lot of good developer information for the things you care about. The, the people who use 
the same tools as you do. They are the ones who are more likely to be uh, the sources of quality recommendations about where to find other information. And this is, you know, the same thing what you get when you have, you know, apprenticeships. You know, who other than blacksmiths know what blacksmiths do and what tools are available? Okay, mm -hmm. they are the professionals that do that. Okay, uh, and so we are very much craftsmen and craftswomen, and uh, uh, we learn things over a long period of time. We also learn how to build the tools that we use. And uh, so uh, we're a great source of information for these things. And you just don't get that information by going to uh, Yahoo Answers and asking a question. You don't have a lot of developers out there answering questions on Yahoo Developer, uh, Yahoo Answers for for the detailed technical information. And the user group is where you could kind of learn, well, how does VB handle its memory management? How do you create things like forms? And so the, the, we spent a lot of time in the original user group uh, talking about, you know, how VB works from its, its um, uh, window management. How did you instantiate forms and such? Uh, and that, uh, uh, that was a really helpful aspect of, of the user group is to talk about uh, the details of how you develop applications and, and see different ways that people develop applications. But that's the thing is, is that uh, what has changed over time is, is that uh, basically Microsoft has incorporated most everything into their framework. Uh, right. from the original VB, okay? And so uh, with the user group, we could kind of see that transition over time. Uh, so the, the group has, uh, and that's, that's one of the advantages of, of the user group is is that it can um, it can keep up with technology and, and change as, as needed, okay? So even though it's no longer the VB users group, it's the .NET developers group, mm -hmm. uh, it, that's because uh, uh, the framework has changed and, and you now have the ability to have people of all languages that, that .NET supports. I'm active on lots of online forums. It's not the same experience, uh, especially when you're in a local area, there's a community of developers that can form that you don't get online. Okay, uh, and also the whole anonymous nature of things online uh, makes it much more ripe for for abuse and trolls and other things. In person, when you're at a user group, you can kick people out of a, of a group. And so you also have a reputation. Uh, and so you, uh, that aspect of it makes the quality of information much higher in a user group. Uh, because uh, everyone knows if they give the bad information, people will know, hey, that person gave bad information and we're not going to rely on them. Uh, online, you don't get that. Uh, I think also with, with a user group, uh, you don't have any other places where you can really socialize with, with people who are doing the same things as you, and you don't get that with the online uh, groups. Um, okay, well, hi, I'm Woody Zool, and I'm a software developer, and I'm a application uh, manager here at Hunter Industries in San Marcos, California. Well, I started uh, programming over 30 years ago, but uh, I was introduced to Visual Basic when, ver I think about the, almost exactly when VB3 came out. And that was instantly productive for me. That was a fantastic uh, little programming environment that you could quickly do uh, you know, a lot of good value stuff. And I used it for all sorts of things. But as as I worked with it for a, a while, maybe a year, I started realizing that the, the books and uh, all the stuff, you know, in those days you couldn't get much information besides from a book, um, that I, I needed to go out and meet a bunch of people that were doing it. And it turned out, well, there was this user group in San Diego. And I don't remember when I first attended. I, I, I'm pretty certain it had to be been before 1996 you guys started before 1996, from what I remembered. So yeah, we started 94. So it probably so it, you guys were meeting at this um, uh, in Mission Valley at this uh, training facility for Microsoft uh, certifications or something. Yeah, Vortex. Uh, Vortex, Vortex. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I still know some of the guys who used to train there. Uh, you you do too, I'm sure. Uh, I guess that place is no longer around. No. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if you were meeting anywhere before that. So if you were, then that would probably pin down better when I started. So I'm going to make a guess. It was 95 because I know in 1996 um, I had already come quite a ways along with my VB6 
uh, or v, VB, whatever, probably three or four. I don't know what it was back then. So, uh, you know, that I'd already been making progress, and I have a very clear memory of uh, a couple meetings there at Vortex where um, where Woody Pewitt was talking, where you were talking, and you guys would always get a couple guys in from Microsoft as often as you could. I remember them talking about NTS, hmm. stuff, probably 1998 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here's what I think is one of the coolest things about this group. I, if I go back through all the jobs, contracts, side work that I've had since that time, I'd say something on the order of 85 to 90 percent come can be traced back to contacts and, uh, that I made through the group. That's kind of amazing to me. Um, Woody Pewitt was always a big uh, source of, of uh, things that were going on, and you could always ask him, hey, you know anything? And he could point to a couple people who were hiring. Um, in reverse, I think that I've gone through at least, at places I've worked, at least 15 or 20 people that got introduced into places where I worked who had come from the group. So I love that. Yeah. I got to meet all kinds of wonderful people. Um uh, one way it really touched me more than any other way was, I think in 1998 or 9, we moved over to Qualcomm. Uh, I started helping out with the group. So it probably was towards the end of 1998. Somewhere shortly after we moved to Qualcomm, and I was at one of the meetups, that we're, you know, our planning meetings we used to have, and, and Woody Pewitt said, well, we need somebody to talk about uh, something next month. And I said, you know, there's, there's not much a technical that I could, a talk that I could give. He said, well, we really need to talk. Everybody's asking because it was a list. We always kept a list of the things people wanted to talk about. All these people are asking, well, how do I get my first job? Mm-hmm. And I had just gotten uh, hired on at, uh, at uh, well, I won't make, name any companies. <laughs> and so I'd just been through the process. I said, well, I could tell them how to do that. You know, so uh, that was, you know, at a point where all you had to do is be able to spell VB and you could get a job. Mm-hmm. And so he actually, uh, so he said, okay, do that talk. So that kind of, that was kind of a bonus for me because that led me to doing more talks and having the people in the group start saying, oh, well, Woody must be an expert on this stuff. And so it became really easy for me to get side work mm-hmm. just because I was in front of people. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, you know, I had certain value. That led to many nice side jobs. So unfortunately for me, uh, right about that period, you guys decided something shortly after that. It might have been as late as two years afterwards, a couple of you, uh, you and Woody in particular, said, well, we're too busy to run the group right now. And Kevin Meadows took over. Mm -hmm. Kevin, kind of after six months or a year, got a little burnt out, and there was nobody else. So I ran the group for about a year, I believe. That led to one of the the most wonderful experiences I've had, because somebody called the group or sent an email to the group needing a tutor. And I was running the website, so I responded to every one of those, saying, oh, you know, uh, we're gonna po- I'll post that up here. Um, you know, let me know about it. And it sounded like something exactly I could do. So I went and, and got this little gig tutoring this, this uh, kind of a kid at the time who uh, just started college. Well, he went on to become quite a programmer, and he's passed me lots of great work over the years. He'd call me up and say, hey, I got this thing. So it's just, you know, not that it's all about work. But it's just it's a great place to make the context. And he's still now been a friend of mine for, what, 15, 10, 15 years. Fantastic. Same, of course, with almost everybody else you meet there. Mm-hmm. The sessions have been wonderful. And I think that I learned, especially in the early years, a whole lot of stuff I would have never learned. It was just as meeting after meeting, talking about relevant stuff that's important to the developer's technical skills. And you get introduced to things by top-notch people. You know, all the speakers we got over the years were top notch. Only occasionally would we get somebody that we were trying to bring up, mm-hmm. give them something new to teach, and, and th- those guys are just kind of learning to do the speaking. But most of the time, we're calling in people who have high quality uh, skills of their own and are out in the community. Uh, and then this, this was a beautiful thing for me. So Woody encouraged me, so there's, of course, I'm the second Woody. Um, Woody encouraged me to do these talks. And that led to me doing more talks at the code camps and at the uh, little conferences and meetups that happen around. And then if you do a good talk at one code camp, you get called by a few groups and say, hey, come do that talk here. 
So it's that network again, working. That's what these groups br have brought to me. Uh, the uh, VB, what we used to call a VB group, and now the .NET group. You know, it's made so many great contacts. I've gotten to get out because of this group. I would have never been able to do that otherwise. So I really value that. And of course, you and, and Woody, who were running it in those days, and everybody who's helped along the years. Fantastic. Where I'm working right now, mm -hmm. it started eight or ten years ago by me helping somebody at the user group. It took six or seven years before they were at a job where they really they thought, you know, we really need that guy here. And they started bugging me. And it took like another two, two years after that, I don't remember now, before the right opportunity came up. But that's you build those connections early. You keep them throughout your life. And uh, you never know. You never know. I remember uh, helping to start the group. I'm the only founding member left. There's about five of us who started the group back in April 2000, uh, 1994. I still, I still can visualize when I found out about the group. Richard Eckhart, who we call the father of the San Diego .NET Developers Group, put an ad in a local uh, computer rag in San Diego called Computer Edge. Uh, doesn't really exist anymore except on the web and he you know he was advertising he was going to start this group and uh, the day the first meeting was going to be the reason I always remember that reading that advertisement or the not an advertisement but like classified ad so as soon as I read it um, it's gonna sound goofy but there was this voice in my head that said, uh, told me that you're going, you're going to have to learn how to speak, how to speak in, front in front of people, people, people for, the for the future. And uh, it was it was a very powerful voice that had said this to me. I didn't know why I needed to speak in the future, but I decided to listen to the voice. I can't remember if I called Richard or I just showed up. I do remember the first talk I ever did. There's probably a couple meetings after we started. But before uh, I talk about my first talk, uh, like most people, I was scared to death to speak in front of people. Uh, I, I think I'd rather die than speak in front of somebody. It's speak in front of anybody. I was uh, a little more shy back then. And uh, I remember being in high school and uh, I would do everything possible when we were given a uh, verbal assignment not to do it. I was, I, I was pretty successful at it. I rarely spoke in front of the class because I was, that was too much for me to do. So the voice told me I needed to uh, fix that problem. So I, I showed up in the group. And a couple couple meetings later, a couple months later, I started speaking at the group uh, on a very regular basis, especially in the beginning. And believe me, those you know talks. At least the first year, I was scared to death. I mean, I know it was a little easier. I was in a small group of people uh, back then. We weren't as big as we are now. But I still remembered I was scared. I had notes, tons of notes, so I was afraid I was going to forget something. Um, my stomach would be in knots. Uh, I'd be very anxious, nervous. I didn't want to do it, but I needed to. And, you know, after a while of doing the talks, I slowly became, you know, not only better at giving talks, but, you know, my, ner my nervousness uh, went away. I don't remember how long it took. I knew it was at least over a year or so before my, uh, you know, knots in my stomach went away and, uh, and I could, you know, just show up and, and speak. And I've always been kind of overly prepared. I kind of still do that now. Including having uh, a lot of equipment with me just in case something goes bad. 
guess it comes from being a, you know, a musician. I always have backup guitars and strings and things like that. So, but I eventually uh, got to the point where I wasn't nervous anymore. But speaking was tough. But the great thing is the user group is free. It's a, it's a great place to, uh, you know, it's a great place to get your feet wet. So that's how the group started. Uh, we've only been in a, we've only been in a handful of locations. Uh, when we first started, we were in the office building. Then we moved to. Uh, I guess we've only been in four locations. We started off in an office building down in Mission Valley. Then we moved to a training site, uh, actually not very far away, still in Mission Valley. And then when uh, the access to that site. Uh, went away we uh there's a guy uh, there's a uh, guy in the audience that uh worked at qualcomm and he said well why don't you just meet at qualcomm and then we said okay you know we didn't have you know we didn't have very many options i show up and the meeting space this guy procured what's the main conference meeting place at qualcomm when I walked in there, I just went, wow. This place was huge. Probably sat 300 plus people, stadium theater seating, you know, huge screen, like a, like a huge movie screen. They actually showed movies there for family. Um, computer controlled everything. Uh, later on, they remodeled it and put plat uh, LCD monitors all over. So, you know, there's no way you couldn't see very well. You know, it actually was too big, you know, because it seemed like there was not a lot of people there because they would spread out. Geeks don't like to sit next to each other, I guess. So, so when Qualcomm decided that they didn't, they didn't want to do that anymore, they were afraid of uh, security issues or I don't know. Uh, our group never did anything. But um, again, there was a guy in the audience um, and uh, he worked at AMN Healthcare. Amen Healthcare uh, just uh, built a uh, new building, actually like two blocks from where I live in Del Mar. And he said, well, why don't you meet there? And we said, okay, you know, we'll meet anywhere as long as it's, uh, you know, it's a decent space and it's convenient and it's free. Again, I walked into this place and I went, wow, again. It was like a, a mini Qualcomm meeting space, stadium, theater, seating. Most of the rows have desks, you know, little flip-out desks. Computer controlled everything, huge screen, the stage, lights, some, you know, which I always have to wrangle with to try to get it out of the speaker's eyes. Again, oh, they even have a, you know, computer controlled shades on the windows. It's awesome. Free parking. And it's two blocks from where I live, which I like, because I just have to roll down the street. I'd walk there if I didn't have to carry, uh, uh, you know, carry things for the user group, like uh, giveaways, things like that. So that's kind of how we started and how we uh, migrated to where we are now. You know, we started off, of course, as a San Diego Visual Basic user group. I'm not sure what uh, version of Visual Basic, uh, probably four or five about when we started and not long after you know .NET was announced we changed our name San Diego.NET Developers Group and then that's uh, where we've been ever since. The meetings at the San Diego.NET Developers Group have always been very well attended depending on the location we're at you know standing room only standing in the halls we average about 50 80 people per meeting get a, you know, a lot of people that come every single time. We have new people. Uh, most of them come back. They like the group. I even bribe my students at UCSD uh, 10 extra credit, uh, 5 extra credit points if they come to the meeting while class is uh, in session. My goal is if I can get you to the meeting once, you're going to come back. And uh, while that's not 100%, I do work on it a lot.
and uh, we get more. We, we get a lot of people from uh, not only UCSD because I bribe them, but we get them, you know, from other colleges, training centers, too. Um, after they leave their training, they still want to keep up their training, so they come to the user group, and it's a great way to, you know, learn for free. Our user group has always been free, and I remember the first meetings we had. Us five original, five six original directors of the group. It was very important. I uh, I made a strong case that as long as we could work it out, we would always be free. I felt that if we charged people to come to our group, then less people would come, or not as many people. And I really feel that user groups are, you know, for the community. And if it's for the community, it should be free. But in the 20 years that we've run the group, uh, we've never, ever charged anybody. And uh, the way we've made money for the group, which we really don't need a lot of money to operate the group, is by holding uh, raffles at the end of the meeting. For most of the time, the user group, if not all the time, the user group's uh, been in existence. It's pretty much been my job, because I have a lot of contacts to get, you know, free uh, swag from, uh, you know, companies like uh, Component One and Telerac and Microsoft and anybody else. I can get software, you know, books, shirts. Oh, and then we hold a raffle at the end of the meeting, you know, dollar per raffle ticket, and, uh, you know, you win... Uh, your choice of any of the prizes. Well, I, I believe all of our meetings are great, uh, but I'm biased. We've had some really awesome meetings. You know, twice uh, we've uh, hosted the uh, .NET Rocks Roadshow at our at our uh, facility. And the last time they were there, they actually, you know, recorded one of their .NET Rocks podcasts um, with Billy Hollis, and that was just an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, meeting and podcast, actually. And uh, first time they came, we were over at Qualcomm, and uh, they recorded some of us uh, just interviewing some of us uh, in their tra in their uh, camper trailer that they drove around the country in. A couple, actually, a couple favorite meetings of mine uh, were when uh, was when uh, Brett or Brent Reckner came to our group. I think he actually came twice, and he he um, I think he worked at Microsoft, and he had something to do with uh, you know uh, being part of the uh, writing the garbage collector for .NET. I think the second meeting, I remember him coming in, and uh, he had his computer and like two monitors, and back then, you know. We didn't have LCD screens. We had those big CRTs, and he's lugging them into the, you know, meeting space. And uh, and uh, you know, the only reason I understand and know a lot about the garbage collector is from those meetings. Another great reason why to go to, you know, user group meetings. From time to time, we've had uh, Microsoft uh, come and speak at our meeting. I think the last time we had a couple guys from the C Sharp team. Well, we had a guy from the C Sharp team and one guy from the. The VB.net team. Even though they weren't great speakers, uh, it's always great to, uh, you know, hear from and talk to, you know, the guys who actually are part of the teams in .net. The way that we've, uh, or I have us, uh, kind of set up the, uh, the how the meetings run is, uh, our group tries to. Uh, help any level of uh, software engineer. So what we've always tried to do was, you know, the first hour have more of a beginner, intermediate talk. Uh, right now, at the end of our 20 year run, for, for uh, quite a few years now, we've had a uh, first, uh, the first hour, 45 minutes is a .NET fundamentals uh, session, which was actually, uh, it was actually, idea from some, one of our uh, members came up to me and said that, uh, you know, these talks are really great, but they're kind of over my head. I said, well, okay. And that's how I came up with the .NET Fundamentals section. 
back when earlier when we first started out, we actually broke up into different groups because we had multiple rooms we could meet in. But since ever since we moved to Qualcomm and the now AMN Healthcare, you know, we only have one big space, and so we can't do that. So we, you know, we try to do a beginner session, and then the last hour or two is usually dedicated to uh, one speaker or speakers, and uh, you know, we do a more intermediate, advanced talk. So we try to appeal to everybody because we want people to come back and even the beginners if they hang out for the advanced talk it's always good you know when you go to any conference or a user group or a code camp it's always good just to go listen to meetings if you don't understand it because especially with .NET you can you can learn uh, you can learn you know not only different parts of the framework but how they uh, how they kind of you know connect or glue together always good to listen even if you might not understand all of it. Well, user groups uh, provide a place to get together one-on-one -on -one with the other people who are either in the field or have a knowledge level above yours or below yours and if they're below yours you get to learn by helping them learn. And uh, uh, networking, of course, is a big one. But uh, the uh, the uh, social aspect of getting together to learn uh, in a situation that is more than just online, uh, it's more like a uh, regular classroom situation on an informal basis. There is an incredible amount to learn just by going and seeing these talks by your peers, by some of the absolute gurus in the area. And even, you're not gonna walk away an expert in any particular technology after one particular talk, but you might walk away with a significant connection for somebody that is uh, more skilled in an area than you are, that you, you can now ask questions. Um, you may wind up with a connection to somebody who can help you find a job. Um, and it's, it's much more about you know, not, not so much about becoming an expert at any one thing, but rather getting exposure to a whole lot of things so that when the time comes and you face some new programming challenge, some new hurdle in your career, you may have heard of some technology or some technique that you don't know much about, but you remember it addressed that kind of problem. And you have a head start on, okay, I need to go research that now because you heard about it at that meeting. The people who haven't heard about it, they're stuck at ground zero with Google and an empty search bar in front of them. And it's going to take them longer to find the right answer. It really builds community. The people that attend the .NET user group come from all over San Diego County, in fact, all over Southern California. And it, it pays to know who these people are. So when you run into a problem, there's people who have specialized skill sets who are willing to take time out of their day to work with you. Like you, you you can call them or drop them an email and they they will they will help you work through a problem when Stack Overflow might not necessarily do it or you have to pour through hours of a plural site video in order to find the answer. So it's it really does build community and it really shows. I think it's a big untapped resource for networking for developers to talk amongst each other. Um, as a recruiter, it's, you know, we're obviously coming to find the best talent, but um, you never know when you might find a job from someone else. We've talked to multiple people that a hiring manager is here and they pull you aside or you never know who you're going to meet. So don't just network with us, network with each other, not only from a technical standpoint, but also from um, a job hunt and, and career search standpoint too. Yeah, and it's such a great resource because there's a lot of times where you ask like, hey, do you guys have any coding problems? And what better than your peers to kind of help you and, and enlighten you with what they're using, what other companies are using, and just um, a really great resource within within each other and just to network with local professionals who can relate to you within this specific San Diego market. Come and talk to somebody. Just say hi. Because you know what? You're going to find such a wealth of information from everybody here and a great love of the craft and it will definitely it will definitely energize you to meet someone who loves the craft as much as people here do. It's going to change your point of view on, on, on things like, um, you know, developers are, the way, they, the, the way we think, it's, uh, we're like inside a box. 
always inside the box that always work correct even when users are complaining oh there's something wrong we think oh maybe it's you that's wrong and uh these user groups actually open your eyes that you're not always correct i would absolutely recommend any candidate that we work with uh, anybody that's out there looking for a position or anybody that's it, it develop a period to come to these groups. You're going to get the opportunity to meet great people, listen to amazing stories, and, and get a chance to really develop your career. Uh, so I'd recommend this group to everybody. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, whenever I meet someone, I find try and find out which user groups they go to because it always helps to just hear a new way of either coding or a new way of attacking things because we all seem to have similar problems that we uh, face in our normal uh, lives and. Um, at work and also outside of work, so it's always helped to connect with someone, uh, both at a professional and personal level. And, and like Joe said, there's not only one way to do anything in this profession, so you get an opportunity to, uh, to, to learn new things and pick brains of people that, that are doing things in a, in a different and possibly more progressive way. You should come to user group meetings because oftentimes when you're developing in a closed environment, you don't get exposed to different technologies and different techniques. And I, for one, have grown in my development by going to these meetings and code camps because I learned other things that I wouldn't have learned in my you know, corporate environment. I would say come to these .NET uh, meetings because um, when you develop in your own world, you don't know what other people are talking or saying about a technology. And you might read blog posts and you might read books about technologies, but you don't know what people will actually say. When you sit down next to someone in a meeting, they might tell you some pretty horrific things about a technology or great things, but those are things that you will never get out of a book or probably even a blog post. As a software developer that not only interviews developers, but also hires developers, going to a user group earns you automatic brownie points in my mind. Because if you do go to one, either because you show up to my user group or I ask you during the interview process, which will be one of my questions. If you go to a user group or a code camp or something on your own time, then I immediately know you like to learn, you like to grow as a software engineer and to spend your own time because work is not gonna give you the time to do this. Software technology changes every day and we have to keep up with it or you're gonna be left behind and you're going to be stuck in a rut. So user groups are a great place to keep up with technology. You'll be exposed to a lot of topics. Go to all the topics every single month, even though you might not be interested. You'll learn something, I guarantee it. The only reason I know as much as I know is because I've been going to my user group for 20 years now. So go to your local user group. It's also a great place to network, find jobs, find other developers. As you know, the only way to get a good raise is to get a new job. And going to a user group is the best place to find new jobs. Recruiters, other people looking for developers, it's a great place to network. There's lots of user groups in your area. Find one that suits your needs and go today. So if you've never been to your local user group, you got to try it. Now, it's after work. You want to be home. You want to be watching the football game or maybe ice skating, right? Yeah. Trust me. What you will get out of a user group is far more than just technical information. It's a community. And it really is a group of people that you have something, if not a lot of things, in common with that wind up becoming a huge resource for you when it's time to look for your next job, when it's time to understand what the next technology that you should be looking into is. Whatever that is, that community is gonna wind up supporting and helping you. I can say that I know of and I have helped and I have found more jobs through the user group people that I know than any other mechanism. Not headhunters, not job boards, not anything else. It's usually just keeping your ears open, starting conversations, and figuring out what's out there and what's available. So go to your local user group today, or at least next time it meets.